Okay, so today we'll be proving, explaining, and then ultimately using the product rule, which as stated is the derivative of f of x times g of x equals f of x times the derivative of g of x plus g of x times the derivative of f of x. So in proving this rule, we start with um, the ultimate definition of a derivative, which is based on essentially the limit definition. So we have the derivative of f of x equals the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So from that, we can then find the derivative of f of x times g of x by initially making this statement applicable to this statement. So we have the derivative of f of x times g of x equals the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h times g of x plus h minus f of x times g of x, and then that's all going to be over h. So from that, we can then say the limit as h approaches 0, and this is where we're going to begin to manipulate this equation algebraically so that we can ultimately prove the rule as a whole. From this, we can state that the limit as h approaches 0 is f of x plus h times g of x plus h. And then we're going to say minus f of x plus h times g of x plus f of x plus h times g of x. And then all the way at the end, we're going to have this minus f of x times g of x. And that's all going to be over h. So in doing this, we haven't changed this equation in any way, as we have the minus f of x plus h times g of x plus f of x plus h times g of x. So it stays constant, but we're adding this to the, to the equation as a whole, inserting it, so that we can begin to manipulate this equation algebraically to get what we want from it. So we're then going to say equals the limit as h approaches 0. And then from there, we're going to pull out the f of x plus h from these two, and we're going to pull out the g of x from these two. So we're going to say f of x plus h, and then in parentheses, g of x plus h minus g of x. And we can essentially I didn't draw that very well proportionally, but we can have the f of x plus h here, and then this statement right here can be over the h, and that's multiplying that. And then we can have the, so right here we can have the plus g of x times, and then in parentheses, f of x plus h minus f of x. And in doing this, this part right here is going to be all over h. And again, I didn't draw that very well proportionally, but the g of x is going to be multiplying that part right there. And what we've done now is we have begun to manipulate this so that we can eventually and ultimately get what we want in deriving and proving the product rule. So from this statement, using our limit definitions, we know that the limit as h approaches 0 of all of this right here is going to be the same as the limit of h approaches 0 of f of x plus h times, and then g of x plus h minus g of x all over h plus the limit as h approaches 0 of g of x times, and then f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So right here, using our limit properties, we can rewrite this statement as we have it right here as the limit of h approaches 0 of f of x plus h times the limit as h approaches 0 of g of x plus h minus g of x all over h, plus then the limit as h approaches 0 of g of x times the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. 
Now that doesn't change the statement right here in any way, it's just rewriting it using what we know about limit properties. So that as visually looks like this. So like I just said, this is no different than this, it's just rewritten using what we know about limit properties. So from this, we can begin to evaluate these limits. So we can take this limit right here, we can plug in that zero for h to evaluate that limit, that's going to give us f of x. This limit is actually the same as right here, it's only using a g instead of an x, so this limit is actually the definition of the derivative of g of x. So f of x times the derivative of g of x. And then this limit right here, as h approaches 0, there actually is no h in, in the limit that we're finding. So this is just going to be g of x. And then this limit right here is the same as the derivative of f of x. So this is going to be the derivative of f of x. So as we have it right here, the derivative of f of x times g of x is equal to f of x times the derivative of g of x plus g of x times the derivative of f of x. And that is the product rule that we have been proving this entire time. All right, so for our first example problem, we will be finding the derivative of h of x, where h of x equals 2x to the third plus x squared. We'll be doing that using the product rule, um, which stands as the derivative of f of x times g of x equals f of x times the derivative of g of x plus g of x times the derivative of f of x. So we will start by finding the separate derivatives of f of x and g of x just to make our, our process a little easier later on. So we can write it out as f of x equals 2x to the third and g of x equals x squared and then the derivative of f of x is going to be 6x squared and the derivative of g of x is going to be 2x. So from this point we can write it out as the derivative of h of x equals 2x to the third times 2x plus x squared times 6x squared. And so what that is, is f of x times the derivative of g of x plus g of x times the derivative of f of x. So that can be simplified as h, the derivative of h of x equals 4x to the fourth plus 6x to the fourth, which can be further simplified as the derivative of h of x equals 10x to the fourth, and that's going to be our final answer for this problem. So for our second example, we will be finding the derivative of h of x um, when h of x equals x squared plus 1 times x cubed minus 2, where this um, example is similar to our first one, but we have two polynomials instead of two monomials. And we are also only using the product rule for this example, the product rule is stated as the derivative of f of x times g of x equals f of x times the derivative of g of x plus g of x times the derivative of f of x. So we can get going with this example problem similar to the first one where we want to write out what f of x equals, what g of x equals, what the derivative of f of x equals, and what the derivative of g of x equals to make it a little simpler um, for ourselves as we're writing out the derivative of h of x. So we can start by saying f of x equals x squared plus 1 and g of x 
equals x cubed minus 2. And from these values, we can say the derivative of f of x equals 2x, and the derivative of g of x equals 3x squared. So now we can start um, writing out the derivative of h of x. We can say the derivative of h of x equals x squared plus 1 times 3x squared plus x cubed minus 2 times 2x. Now what that is is um, essentially just the product rule. We have f of x times the derivative of g of x plus g of x times the derivative of f of x. Now we can simplify this by saying the derivative of h of x equals, now we're going to distribute this 3x squared in, so 3x to the fourth plus 3x squared plus, now we're distributing the 2x in, so we're saying 2x to the fourth minus 4x. Now we can simplify this even further by saying the derivative of h of x equals, we're going to combine these two, 5x to the fourth plus 3x squared minus 4x. And that is going to be our final answer. So for our third example problem, we will be finding the derivative of 3 sine x times 10x. And we're going to be doing that with the product rule. This is similar to the first two we did, except we're not working with um, polynomials here, we are actually working with trig identities. So for this one, um, you really just need to know your trig rules with regards to derivatives, but we're going to start the same way we did the first two, just writing out f of x, g of x, the derivative of f of x, and the derivative of g of x. So we're going to say f of x equals sine x and g of x equals the tangent of x. Because we got to remember, this 3 is a coefficient here, and it applies to the whole thing. That's not part of one of these, one of these identities. So from here, we can say the derivative of f of x equals the cosine of x, and the derivative of g of x equals the secant of x all squared. So again, that's just the trig rules with regards to the derivatives. And from here, we can then begin to write out our derivative of h of x, simply using the product rule, which as reads is f of x times, the derivative of f of x times g of x equals f of x times the derivative of g of x plus g of x times the derivative of f of x. So the derivative of h of x is going to be 3, because we have to remember that the 3 applies to everything here. So 3 times, and then parentheses, sine, the sine of x times the secant of x, all squared, plus the tangent of x times the cosine of x. And we can simplify it this by distributing that 3 in to those two values by saying the derivative of h of x equals 3 times the sine of x times the secant of x all squared plus 3 times the tangent of x times the cosine of x. And that right there is going to be our final answer for this example problem. All right, so for our fourth and final example problem, we will need to use the product rule and the quotient rule, and we'll be finding the derivative of h of x when h of x equals 2x plus 1 times x plus 2 over x minus 1 times x plus 3. So what we're going to do here 
is we are going to find our f of x, our g of x, our derivative of f of x, and our derivative of g of x, and those are actually going to work towards the quotient rule. So we are going to start by writing out f of x, which equals 2x plus 1 times x plus 2. And then g of x, which equals x minus 1 times x plus 3. And f derivative of x, and this is where we're going to have to start doing calculations because we are going to want to find f derivative of x and the, g, and the derivative of g of x. So to find the derivative of f of x, we are going to have to use the product rule. We are going to be finding the derivative of 2x plus 1 times x plus 2. And we can kind of think of that as its own equation in a way. Um, so we will be finding the derivative, again, of 2x plus 1 times x plus 2. And let's use different variables so we, uh, we don't get confused with this. Um, we can write out p of x equals 2x plus 1 and q of x equals x plus 2 and so here we're um, the p of x is this 2x plus 1 and the q of x is this x plus 2 we're thinking of it kind of like a f of x times g of x um, that we would be doing with a more simple product real equation um, and then we're going to be finding the derivative of p of x which is simply equal to 2 here. And the derivative of q of x, which is equal to 1. And from this, we can find the derivative of f of x, which is going to be 2x plus 1. And then that's going to be times 1, so it's going to stay the same, plus x plus 2. And then that's going to be times 2. So what that is is p of x times the derivative of q of x plus q of x times the derivative of p of x. And now we can begin to simplify that a little bit. Say the derivative of f of x equals 2x plus 1 plus, now we're going to distribute that 2 in, 2x plus 4. So we can simplify that even further. We combine these two x's to say 4x plus 5. And that's going to be our derivative of f of x, 4x plus 5. Now, we are going to find the derivative of g of x. So, g of x, as stands, is x minus 1 times x plus 3. And we're going to think of it um, just like another simple product rule um, scenario. So, we are going to say, let's use different variables again so we don't get confused. Um, s of x equals x minus 1 and r of x equals x plus 3. So again, that s of x is this x minus 1 and that r of x is this x plus 3. And we can find the derivative of s of x, which is going to be 1, and the derivative of r of x, which is also going to be 1. Now from here, we can find the derivative of g of x. And now we're using the product rule. The derivative of g of x equals x minus 1 times 1, so it stays the same, plus x plus 3 times 1. So it also stays the same. So what that is is s of x times the derivative of r of x plus r of x times the derivative of s of x. Now we can simplify that a little bit by saying the derivative of g of x is 2x plus 2. So from what we have right here, we can actually find the derivative of h of x. And this is when we're going to use the, the quotient rule, which I have written right here. Um, the quotient rule, as defined, is the derivative of f of x over g of x equals 
g of x times the derivative of f of x minus f of x times the derivative of g of x over g of x squared. So as we're beginning to apply this, we can say the derivative of h of x equals, and this is where we're using the quotient rule, so we're going to start with that g of x, which is x minus 1 times x plus 3. So x minus 1 times x plus 3. And then that's going to be multiplied with this derivative of f of x, 4x plus 5. And now we're going to say minus, and we're going to take that f of x, which is 2x plus 1 times x plus 2. So we have this 2x plus 1 times x plus 2, and then that's going to be multiplied with the derivative of g of x, 2x plus 2. And this is going to be all over g of x squared. Now that g of x is x minus 1 times x plus 3. Again, it's x minus 1 times x plus 3, all squared. So, now we can begin the longer process of simplifying this. Uh, we can say the derivative of h of x is, and at this point we're going to FOIL this x minus 1 times x plus 3, so we can say x squared plus 3x minus x minus 3. And we can combine these right here. Three, of, 3 times x minus x is obviously 2 times x. So we're going to say x squared plus 2x minus 3. And then that's still going to be multiplied with this 4x plus 5. And now we're going to say minus. And we're going to FOIL this 2x plus 1 and this x plus 2. So we can say minus 2 x squared plus 4x plus x plus 2. And again, we can combine these right here. 4x plus x, obviously 5x. So we have that 2x squared plus 5x plus 2. And then that's going to be multiplied with this 2x plus 2. Again, all over that g of x squared. And for the sake of this problem, we can leave that g of x squared as x minus 1 times x plus 3 all squared. Um, we don't need to FOIL that in this case. This is going to be acceptable as the g of x squared in our final answer. So we're going to say x minus 1 times x plus 3 all squared. And now we're going to further simplify this. We're going to say the derivative of h of x is at this point we're going to, we're going to um, multiply in this 4x plus 5 to this x squared plus 2x minus 3. And this 2x plus 2 to this 2x squared plus 5x plus 2. So in multiplying in that 4x, we're going to say the derivative of h of x is 4x to the third plus 8x minus 12x, and then in multiplying in that 5, we're going to say plus 5x squared plus 10x minus 15. It's 8x squared. Where the at? second thing. 4x to the third plus 8x squared. Oh. Can All right. erase this a little Don't bit. Don't stop the video. I'm just going to go from here. Yeah. So at this point, we're going to further simplify this derivative of hx. We are going to be f um, multiplying in that 4x plus 5 to this x squared plus 2x minus 3, and this 2x plus 2 to the 2x squared plus 5x plus 2. So in multiplying in that 4x, we're going to say um, 4x cubed plus 8x squared minus 12x, and then in multiplying in that 5, we're going to say plus 5x squared plus 
x minus 15. And then here in multiplying in, we're going to keep this in parentheses right now for the sake of simplicity. And in multiplying in that 2x, we're going to say 4x to the third plus 10x squared plus 4x. And then in multiplying in this 2, we're going to say plus 4x squared plus 10x plus 4. Still all going to be over that gx squared. Now, and further simplifying this, we are going to begin to combine these values. And we're going to take that 4x to the third. It's the only value where x is to the third, so 4x to the third. And now we're going to say, so we have this plus 8x squared plus 5x squared. So that's going to be plus 13x squared. And then this minus 12x plus 10x, so minus 2x minus 15. And right here, we're just going to distribute this negative into all of these values. So we're going to say minus 4x to the third, minus 10x squared, minus 4x, minus 4x squared, minus 10x, minus 4. Again, all over g of x squared. Okay, and now we can say the derivative of h of x, and this is where we're going to combine all of these values, and we're going to say the derivative of h of x is, we have this 4x to the third minus 4x to the third, so those will obviously cancel, and then we have 13x squared minus 10x squared, so that's 3x squared, and then minus 4x squared, so negative x squared. Now we have this m negative 2x minus 4x, so negative 6x, minus 10x, negative 16x, and negative 15 minus 4, which is going to be minus 19 right here. That's going to be all over this g of x squared, which as I said is acceptable to leave in this form for the sake of this equation. So this is going to be our final answer. The derivative of h of x equals negative x squared minus 16x minus 19 all over x minus 1 times x plus 3 all squared.